Hello and welcome to Spark Rugby League. We have something to talk about today. A massive announcement yesterday, probably one of the biggest signings in Super League history. The news that Greg Inglis uh, will be joining Warrant and Wolves next season now. I mean, I don't think he really needs much intro introduction. He's um, a multiple NRL Grand Final winner, a World Cup winner. He's pretty much won everything in the game over there. He's won pretty much all the individual accolades as well. Ty Churchill medalist. Um, Dalian Medal, he's won them all so he doesn't really need much introduction, I think the news has surprised everybody though and it's, it's a huge announcement and I think probably a really good announcement at a time when everybody's searching for that something to look forward to um, I'll come to you first Paul, I mean, I mean I was left stunned by the signing, were you the same? It, it literally come from nowhere, I mean it was it was crazy because, uh, as we were saying before, there was a, a few, there was a few like murmurings on Twitter. I think the, the Telegraph reported it in in Australia, and if, if you look at what, what, and then people said they're they're kind of saying he, they're, they're going to sign Greg Inglis, and you're thinking, well, he's he's retired, he's he's got, you know, he, he retired through injury, which you know this is only, you know, this is not long since he's announced his retirement, and then within a, within like an hour, Warrington are announcing that they've signed him. It's just, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, I mean, I think we all needed a bit of a lift in the sport, and I think that really gave us a lift because obviously, you know, whether you're a Warrington fan or not, if, you, if, if your club's in Super League next year, uh, you've got, you know, Greg Linglis is going to come and play at your ground next year alongside James Maloney, Sonny Bill Williams. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's really good news for Super League. I, I mean, we should be really shouting this from the rooftops. Yeah, well, I'll come to you in a minute, um, Trev. Obviously, we've got Trev here uh, from Australia who's going to give us a lowdown as well. But um, just to come to you, Jack. Now, what sort of Greg English do you think we're getting? I think, obviously, it's about the name more than anything. Um, but he won't be coming over, for, over here for a uh, holiday, I don't think. Um, but as, uh, as Paul touched on it there, I mean, he's been out for a while. He's been, I think he announced his retirement about this time last year, April 2019. And, and to be honest, he's not really been the same player since 2017 when he ruptured his uh, anterior cruciate ligament. He struggled since that point. So, I mean, firstly, how surprised are you by the signing and what sort of Greg English do you think Warrington are going to get? I mean, it was crazy, wasn't it? I mean, Paul touched on it there. It, it all sort of came out of nowhere within, the, within about an hour. You know, rumours had broken and, and there was all this speculation going on on social media and stuff. And then all of a sudden, Warrington announced it and you know, the entire league world went into meltdown over this news, you know, it was one of those just so unexpected pieces of news that you just don't expect to see on a, on, on a daily basis whatsoever. Um, you know, and what impact he's going to have in Super League is a really interesting one. Like you mentioned, he's been out for a while, he announced his retirement last year. Um, by the time he makes his Super League debut, he'll have, he'll have been out for almost two years, you know, not, not played a professional game in that time. And, um, I did read some reports, you know, when, when the rumours first started to emerge that he was looking to to make a comeback to the sport. Um, I think he, uh, he he was was asked by Russell Crowe, obviously the um, the owner at South, if he'd play for another club that I think Russell Crowe has, has invested in he's tried to bring back here in, in one of the lower leagues in Australia. So it's a bit of a jump to sort of, you know, one minute be considering lower, lower Australian leagues and then, you know, come and, and, and jump up to the top level in, in England and in, in, in Europe. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt in the kind of player he is, you know, former gold and boot winner, um, you know, so many accolades, both from a team point of view and an individual point of view. But, you know, like you said, he has his, his form did deteriorate somewhat since that, that knee injury. And I think he had short, some shoulder problems as well. And, you know, that, they were the reasons he, he retired, but I'd, I'd imagine it's fair to say that they contributed to that decision. Um, I think he's also suffered some some mental health struggles as well since since retirement and and stuff like that, which is you know is always a shame to see from players. But if he's in the right mindset to come back and he's he's raring to go, um, you know you look at some of the the great athletes we've had in our sport over the years, he's up there as as one of if not the best um, in my opinion. You know just just the physical presence that he always used to have as a centre or as a fullback or even in the halves where he played sometimes, you know, he's, he's an undoubt, undoubtedly skillful player. Um, and if he can approach his new contract with as much desire and as much commitment as he always has done in the past, then I don't see any reason why, you know, he's got however many months now 
um, a good probably 10, 10 months or so at least to, to get himself in the right shape and get himself conditioned again for Super League. So if he's willing to throw it, you know, throw, throw himself into it and give his all, then I don't see why it can't be a huge success. Well, what, what's been the reaction from Dan Undertrev? Because as we mentioned there, uh, Greg Inglis is 33 now. Um, he's be, he was actually medically retired, wasn't he, a, a year ago. Um, and there's, I think there's been a bit of a backlash from a few people down under suggesting that Sal's maybe did it to get him off the salary cap. Um, just what sort of reaction has there been in Australia to this? Okay, uh, obviously quite a few people are not happy because all throughout the media of his retirement it was he was medically retired. That was not the case. He was not medically retired. He retired, but the old administration, Todd Greenberg and that, still gave uh, cap space to South Sydney. So he wasn't actually retired medically. It was just the media saying he was uh, medically retired. So he wasn't medically retired. So obviously quite a few people were upset about that because obviously um, by having the cap space, uh, it's allowed them to buy some extra players that they wouldn't have had. Example, your James Roberts or your Latrell Mitchells, like, you know, it was a lot of money that they were able to get for what for the cap space. But overall, you know, like I think it'll be great for Sibley, especially Warrington. Don't get me wrong, Warrington's had some good players over these play for him, like Alan Langer, uh, Andrew Johns. Obviously, had a few had a little stint over there. But I'll be honest with you, I believe because he, he's still pretty fit. Obviously, there's a difference between just being fit and match fitness. Big difference. But I reckon. Um, Speaking to one of the old trainers from the Melbourne Storm uh, before I came on air, they said he, he's ready to prime. When, they, when he gets over there, he should be in his prime and ready to go. And if it does happen, mate, and Warren can go on and have a great year and end up winning, mate, he, it could be uh, Brian Bevan the second. <laughs> <laughs> that would be epic. Uh-huh. I, th- I think we spoke we spoke a little bit before we came on about well, it's, it's come out of the blue for us. Is it is it almost done the same over there? Did anybody expect Greg Inglis to play again? Mate, no one knew about it. The only people that would have known about it was Greg, his agent, and obviously Dean Ritchie from the Daily Telegraph. Right. Is it as um so is South Sydney reacting at all to this because? Wasn't he involved there in some capacity? Yeah, well, um, South Sydney, yeah, we're aware of it because he was part of the, um, oh, excuse me, he was part of the coaching staff, part of the development pathway. And uh, my understanding is that they've gave blessing for him to leave his job to go over and play. And you also got to understand, South Sydney have a good relationship with Warrington. So why not would you let him go? I reckon if it was another club, it probably would have had a bit of a backlash. But uh, because it's Warrington uh, and they've got a good relationship, why not let him go? Yeah, and I think we, we put some out yesterday on, on the website about him being 16 to 1 to be next year's Man of Steel, Paul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you fancy yeah. a bit on that? Yeah, the lads, yeah, the lads have put an index come up a few ones, haven't I? I think was it two to one to get in the dream team? But I mean, that's quite interesting because uh, I mean, I'm, I actually when we wrote it up, we went about him playing the centre. Um, but I mean, he's a very, very versatile. I mean, there's got Warrington got a few players that are versatile. I mean, Ratchford can play in the house, play in the centres. I mean, Inglis certainly can. Uh, and I, I, I just wonder where Trev thinks he'll actually play. And uh, another thing, do you think he can probably do it at Wakefield on a Thursday night? <laughs> I think you uh, play in the centres, you know, because obviously, yeah, he has had those injuries. So putting him in the centres uh, just uh, limits the workload compared to a fullback. And can he play at Wakefield on a Thursday night? It's just... Of course he can. <laughs> <laughs> in the rain in February as well, yeah? Beg your pardon? So I'm saying, can he do it in the rain in February as well then, yeah? Could he do it in February? In the rain. Yeah, probably, mate. <laughs> they could do it in the rain, mate. you gotta, you got to remember, guys, he played to Melbourne. And the Melbourne weather's just like your weather. <laughs> yeah, it's true that. I think um, I'll come to you, Jack, for the final word on this. 
I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. Do you, do you think Greg Inglis to Warrington, do you think it'll be a success? I do, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, mean, I mean, overall, you, even if he doesn't perform to the sort of standards we've seen him play in the NRL over the past few years, he himself is a household name. You know what I mean? If, if nothing else, Warrington are going to make a lot of money from ticket sales. You know, they're going to be, people are going to, going to be going through that game, not necessarily to see, you know, the game that's on, but to see Greg Inglis. You know, he's that much of a spy icon, not just, um, you know, in, in rugby league circles. I think, you know, his, his reach, especially his work with the indigenous, um, indigenous people and, and the indigenous community over in Australia, has seen him reach, you know, so much further than just the sort of rugby league spectrum. So, you know, he's, he's a global superstar and, and people are going to want to see him. You know, you can you can easily see fans of of lower league clubs, uh, perhaps over there in, in in Lancashire in that sort of area, going to to Super League games just to see the man. Um, you know, so if nothing else, Warrington will, will, will make a profit off him, I'd imagine, um, in terms of ticket sales. And you know, what 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 a player to sort of build your team around and say that that you saw and and that played for your team. So I I think he'll be it'll be really good. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Um, fingers crossed he'll be in, in, a, in a similar condition than you know, to what he was in, in the NRL, but you know, we'll have to see. But I, yeah, I, I can't wait for him to, to come over and play. Really can't. i tell you what, I was just thinking then that would have been an interesting bet, um, Paul. In the noughties, if you'd have put a bet on uh, Greg Inglis, Sonnyville Williams and Israel Falau to all the in <laughs> 2021. <laughs> Fantastic! It's, it's it's unbelievable, isn't it? Really, I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, uh, and he obviously is a legend, isn't he? He's not he's not come over here just for a day. He's got his he got his, he's got his legacy to protect. He's not he, he's not going to come over here and ruin his legacy by um you know coming over here basically for a payday, which some people have maybe is accusing him of. I mean, I mean, you know, he's the real deal. He's up there with JT and, and Billy Slater, Cameron Smith. He's I mean, he, he he's in that he's in that um that bracket for sure for, for sure. Yeah, well, it's certainly interesting. Sam Burgess next, maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, right now, Sam Burgess, if Sam Burgess came out of retirement, there will be hell to pay over here because he did medically retire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, if Bradford get into Super League, you never say never. You never know. You just never, never know. Never but it's, never. It's, I think it's great news for the game. It's something to talk about. It's such a big name signing. And we've seen, obviously, that the publicity we've got from Sonny Bull Williams. Hopefully we can get something similar from Greg Inglis next year. Uh, let us know in the comments, guys, what you think of the signing. Do you think Greg will be a success at Warrington? And do you think he'll help uh, make 2021 their year? <laughs> we'll find out. But yeah, please like and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.